Okay, so I've spent the past 14 days with Samsung's latest foldable, the Z Fold 4. And I have to admit, this phone is really growing on me. Initially, I didn't think it would, but I'm liking it more than I like the Z Fold 2 and the Z Fold 3, both of which I did ultimately end up getting rid of for a variety of reasons, which we will dive into in this video. Now, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that the Z Fold 4 is a huge upgrade over its predecessors because it's really not. But what I will say is the Z Fold 4 is a major refinement to the Z series and a big step in the right direction. This phone, the Z Fold 4, is the foldable that made me change my stance on the future of foldables. After having gone through both the Fold 2 and the Fold 3, my stance ended up being the future of foldables is looking bleak and I really don't see a place for this form factor in this market. But after having used the Z Fold 4, my viewpoint has entirely shifted. Samsung put a lot of thought and effort on the software front this year with Android 12L, all while improving the battery life and bringing down the overall weight of the Fold 4 by 8 grams. Which to me is a pretty big deal because one of my biggest complaints with the Z Fold 3 was that it was just far too heavy to carry around as a practical everyday functioning phone. So in this video, let's break down my thoughts on the Z Fold 4 and find out if picking up the Galaxy Z Fold 4 in 2022 is now a good option with all these new refinements. How's it going everyone? My name is RJ and this is the Z Fold 4. After watching this video, if you're thinking about picking up the Z Fold 4 or even the Z Flip 4, there are some links for you guys in the description below. Also, if you do want to stick around for more Samsung content, including a video I'll be dropping soon called A Day in the Life with the Z Fold 4, then make sure you do drop a like on this video and subscribe to the channel because that would be much, much appreciated. So right off the bat, a couple of things jump out at me this year when holding this phone in my hands. This is a form factor that I'm really familiar with, but with subtle differences. These subtle differences make the Fold 4 a lot more comfortable to use this year. First First off, the reduction in weight is definitely noticeable. In the hands, the phone does feel a bit lighter and more importantly, it's actually comfortable to use. A lot of people love to point out that the Z Fold series is too bulky and too heavy to use. And to be quite frank, I once also shared the same sentiment. But this year, I wouldn't really call this bulky. In fact, the Z Fold 4 is only 23 grams heavier than the iPhone 13 Pro Max. And this is a whole folding phone that fits into my pockets. The body is slightly shorter and both the outer and the inner displays have thinner bezels. Shrinking the bezels makes using the outer cover screen a lot more practical. On the Z Fold 3, I couldn't use the outer screen comfortably at all. It was just far too narrow to type on and in certain scenarios in which I didn't want to, I was forced to use the inner panel. All because I just could not get used to that narrow cover screen. So shrinking the bezels this year on the cover screen is what I would consider to be a major refinement. Now I'm able to use the cover screen in a practical manner like how I would on a regular phone. But of course, with the option to unfold the Fold 4 and wield a massive 7.6 inch panel whenever I want. That my friends is innovation. The hinge this year, just like what I've noticed on the Z Flip 4, does feel a tad bit sturdier, which translates to the overall durability of the device being better. I understand a lot of potential buyers have some major concerns with the overall durability of foldable displays, and it does make a lot of sense to have concerns. But after having gone through three generations of foldables, if you are careful with your devices, a Z Fold 4 or even a Z Flip 4 is going to serve you just fine. Samsung has done hundreds and hundreds of hours of stress tests on these devices and they've held up perfectly fine. So durability should really be no concern. To me in person, this gray green colorway looks incredible. There is a nice matte finish on this phone which does add to the overall grip of the device. But there is no way I'm going to be using a $2,500 Canadian phone without a case. I've got a few cases from Speaking coming in and I will be making a dedicated video on those cases once they do arrive. But for now, I'll link a few of those cases that are being sent over in the description below if you are interested. I've noticed that the Fold 4 doesn't slide all over the place when placed flat on the table, thanks to the matte like finish on the back. But it does rock back and forth uncontrollably thanks to the camera bumps. This is something a good case from Spigen should have no issues addressing at all. Speaking of solving problems, Samsung overhauled the Z Fold 4 with useful features that really take advantage of the 7.6 inch panel. On the Z Fold 3, navigating a large display was a cumbersome task, especially when it came to multitasking. But this year, Samsung made the big screen experience a lot easier to navigate and take advantage of. This year, it feels like a home screen I actually want to use on the regular to multitask, thanks to the useful feature Samsung added with Android 12L. So instead of calling it Android 12L, I would have gone with Android 12W, a W for great multitasking implementation. You see, with Android 12L, when you open an app on the inner display, a dock appears on the bottom, which mirrors apps you already have set up on the home screen, along with quick access to two of your most recently used applications. This just streamlines the act of creating a workspace where you can have multiple applications open at once. My favorite go-to combo is Twitter in the corner 
Twitter, Telegram on top, and YouTube on the bottom. I can now simultaneously catch up on my socials with Twitter, catch up on my favorite creators watching their videos, all while productively chatting with my friends on Telegram. Adding these software features I feel like lowers the barrier of entry for multitasking. Just buy enough so I do find myself using a multitasking workflow much more often. The best part is you can come back to that workspace anytime you want because the entire workspace with multiple windows is saved as a recently used application. A genius implementation on Samsung's part. Of course, you could always multitask on Samsung foldables, but this year with these new features to Android 12L, I do find once again the barrier of entry to be lowered, which in turn makes me want to take advantage of all of this green real estate more often. Now, app optimization still needs major improvements. When using the inner display, there are certain applications that just look like a blown up version of the original. There is still a lot of work to be done in the app optimization department, but the potential here is huge. Like take a look at an app like TikTok, for example, which is optimized for the Z Fold 4. It really takes advantage of the entire display, you can read the comments off to the right while scrolling through your feed down the middle. This does enhance the overall interactive aspect of consuming content on TikTok because you are much more engaged when the comment section is right there off to the right. You also have to remember that this display is using a 4x3 aspect ratio. So when you are watching content and you want to watch it using the entire panel, a good portion of the video does get cut out. Now, battery life is something that has always hindered the Fold lineup. And I was kind of worried since this phone has the same battery capacity of 4400 mAh as the Z Fold 3. But the good news is on a full charge, the Z Fold 4 is lasting a lot longer than the Z Fold 3 thanks to the ultra-efficient Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 chipset, which does offer 30% improved power efficiency and you can see that putting in work on this phone. So with the adaptive refresh rate turned on, I'm averaging close to 7 hours of screen on time over the past 2 weeks. This is with me switching between 5G and a Wi-Fi network for about half of my day. Of course, my usage does vary from day to day, but on a typical day, it's usually social media scrolling for about an hour, replying to emails using the split keyboard for about an hour, reading a good book for about an hour or so on the Kindle app, chatting with friends and family members on Telegram and WhatsApp, and watching a few YouTube videos and Netflix shows for about an hour a day. So even with all of this usage, I have had no issues with the battery life over the course of my day, confidently ending my days with around 20 to 30% remaining. On heavier days when I do need that extra juice, the Fold 4 does support fast charging, which does get you 50% in about 30 minutes. The Fold 4 also offers fast wireless charging and wireless power share for juicing up any Qi enabled accessory like your Galaxy Buds Pro or in my case the AirPods 3. Now I've never been a fan of typing on Samsung's default keyboard and this could just be a me thing but I've always preferred Gboard. I personally do find my typing accuracy to be much better on Gboard. With the Gboard installed, my typing experience on both the inner and the outer cover screen is just fine. I used the split version of the Gboard keyboard while typing on the inner display. It did take me a few hours to get accustomed to, but once I got that muscle memory down, it was smooth sailing from there. With a folding phone, it's inevitable that a folding display is going to sport a pronounced crease. When you're looking at the Z Fold 4 head on, you will not notice a crease. But it's at certain angles or under extremely bright conditions where you do notice the crease. To be honest, at the end of the day, it doesn't bother me in the least bit. I actually do prefer a crease over a notch like what's found on an iPhone. I know that's not a popular opinion, but hey, that's just my preference. Every time I go back to using a foldable device, I'm just reminded of how much I really love this dynamic AMOLED 7.6 inch panel. I do play a few games using the inner display and obviously watch a ton of shows. And I still haven't gotten over the fact that I can unfold my phone to consume content on a 7.6 inch panel. Now that is innovation. Especially now that the bezels are thinner, it does make watching content on this display a much more captivating experience. One thing to take into account with the Fold lineup is that if this is going to be your daily driver of choice, it does make other devices like your iPad expendable. I do own an iPad mini 6 and I just love the compact form factor and the size of this tablet. But now that I do have the Z Fold 4 as my daily driver, I can without hesitation get rid of my mini 6. So if you find yourself staring at the Z Fold 4's price tag and telling yourself that it's just far too expensive, keep in mind that with this device, it does make devices like your iPad expendable, especially since it does work with a stylus. Now for the fun part, let's take a look at these cameras and see how much Samsung has improved the camera setup this year because this year there is an improvement. The main camera did get a spec bump up to a 50 megapixel sensor. The main sensor is great. Pictures taken on this phone now have a less processed look to them. They're not over sharpened or even over saturated like they were on the Z Fold 3, which does make taking pictures on this device feel like they were taken on a flagship lens. The telephoto lens this year is also improved. There is a notable reduction in sharpening and these images turned out a lot better than what I expected. At maximum zoom 10x, the camera is still able to pull out a pretty detailed image. Even with all of this noise, it is still relatively sharp and much better than the shots I remember coming out of the Z Fold 3's 10x zoom. The ultra wide camera though still isn't the best. There is no real difference here from what I remember on the Fold 3. 
maybe a slight chance in the white balance being better, but that's pretty much it. The 4 megapixel selfie camera found on the inner display is found underneath the panel. It is very well camouflaged this year, but the quality of the images coming out of his lens are just not that good at all. I would say the quality is just terrible. I keep saying this year after year, just get rid of the selfie camera in the inner panel altogether and bring down the price of the device. Especially because this is a folding phone, meaning that you can use the main lens as a selfie camera. And not to mention there's another selfie camera found on the cover screen, which to me is a much better option than the inner selfie camera. A main appeal of this form factor is that you can use the main camera for vlogging or taking selfies. The main sensor captures great video detail and a good shadow depth of field. The audio to me sounds great, but let me know what you guys think in the comments below. All right, so this is what the video quality looks like coming out of the main 50 megapixel sensor. So as you guys can see, the stabilization is pretty good. I'm going on my daily walk right now. Uh, yeah, the stabilization is pretty good. There's some pretty good depth of field. And the color accuracy, the saturation, everything looks perfect. So let me know how the audio sounds down in the description below. In my two weeks with the Z Fold 4, there is a lot to like here. As you guys saw for yourself, Samsung has refined the experience of the Fold and this is a step in the right direction. The new multitasking abilities combined with the reduction in weight and the improved cameras definitely make this phone an enticing option this year for a select niche group of consumers. It's a pretty great portable option that with the current trading deals do make it affordable. But I'm not saying that this phone is ready for mass adoption like the Z Flip 4. Just yet. But it is definitely getting there and it's made me reconsider my stance on foldables altogether. I'm at a point now where I can just come out and say it. I was flat out wrong. After having used the Fold 2 and the Fold 3, I thought that the Fold lineup had no place in the current marketplace. But the Fold 4 just proved me wrong. And I'm curious to see if I still feel that way when I'm ready to drop my long-term review in a few months from now, which you guys should definitely consider subscribing for. If you made it to the end of this video, drop a dolphin emoji down in the comments below so I know exactly who my true supporters are. As always, thank you so much for watching and don't forget to flex with your foldable tech.